and he's not Charlie Checkdown. He's getting the ball downfield, number one in the league in yards per attempt. Now, the other thing the Eagles have that may come in handy here today, LaShawn McCoy, the number two ranked rusher in the National Football League. With this weather, they're going to have to use LaShawn McCoy and his running skills. Charlie Checkdown had some good years, by the way. <laughs> For the Lions, they're explosive, they're talented. People think maybe they should have more wins than seven and five, but John, you kind of get a little bit of everything, everything with them, but they are in control in their division right now. Well, here's what they are. They're talented and they're good. And they put themselves in great position. They control their own destiny. Here's the only issue with the Detroit Lions. They sometimes beat themselves. They turn the ball over too much. They can't do it. Matt Stafford talked about that, particularly in the weather. He said mistakes are compounded. We've got to protect the football. That's going to go a long way in deciding this game. Who can protect the football? So a big game weather factor here in Philadelphia. A special moment of silence around the NFL today. For that, we had to public address announcer Dan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in a moment of silence for Nelson Mandela, who died earlier this week. Mr. Mandela's courage, compassion, and leadership inspired millions of people around the world. We're back in snowy Philadelphia. Time now for the Hobbit players to watch. John, who do you got today? Well, Kevin, these guys are different in stature, but they have one thing in common. They make plays. They wreak havoc on defense. Calvin Johnson, Deshaun Jackson, the players to watch. Good luck with the footing, boys. Brought to you by the Hobbit, the desolation of smog. It's in theaters everywhere on Friday. Big game in Philly and the weather factor. Jim Schwartz and the Lions against Chip Kelly and the Eagles next. I don't know what else could possibly feel like a playoff game. I mean, two teams right in the mix, 27 degrees. And yeah, look at that picture. Snow coming down hard in Philadelphia. And I think this is a lot more snow than people expected in this area, John. <laughs> Look at it. It's sticking to the eyelashes. That's how thick it is. We got here this morning and there was nothing on the field. It was clear and a lot warmer, too. The grass was green when we arrived. It's not green anymore. But, Kevin, this is what the NFL is all about. You talk about and you want, you strive for meaningful, meaningful games in December. Both these teams have it. It's going to be fun to watch. I think that's Chip Kelly, but to be frank, I have no idea. So I'll say it's Chip Kelly. Jim Schwartz, maybe. <laughs> maybe just an usher. I'm not totally sure. That's Alex Henry. He will kick it off for Philadelphia. Low wobbler sliding in the snow. Someone's got to pick it up. It's Jeremy Ross. He's at the 15 and up to the 20 and belted. Actually, I think that is the 15. That's the kind of day we're going to have here, Philadelphia, John. Matthew Stafford, who has had another tremendous year, but turnovers have been an issue. And that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a very talented quarterback that can get the ball down the field. He's got the weapons prone to turnovers, though, as this is this whole offense. First and 10 for the Lions at their own 16-yard line. Reggie Bush not starting this game. Joy Bell and Stafford going to throw it. It's a duck. And it's incomplete. That'll give you an idea what you're looking at, John. One of the guys with the hardest, excuse me, the strongest throwing arms in the league just threw that pass. Well, it's typically the thought is, I played a lot of football in Denver. You can throw the football in the snow. This isn't just snow. This is flurries. It's coming down, and it clearly affected Matthew Stafford on the first pass of the game. Meanwhile, Reggie Bush not starting this game. We'll see if there's more to that. Joy Bell, he's been a good... Number two back for this team in the backfield now. Calvin Johnson to the top of your screen, by the way. Play clock at three. And they fumble the football, and Stafford does recover 
for no gain. Matthew Stafford grew up in Dallas, Texas. Now, I know it gets cold down there occasionally. They have snow. He's not used to this. They play in a dome. He's not used to it. Nick Foles from Texas as well. We're going to see who can hold on to the football. Look at the amount of snow on the field. Look at the amount of snow. There's got to be two inches of snow at least. The first down line, thankfully, is working because I can't see where it is. <laughs> Third and nine. They're going to dump it off to Bell. Looking for his footing, and he's going to be shy of a first down. You could see how tender the cuts are out there on that, that snow. It was Patrick Chung with the stop three and out Lions. Smart play call by the offensive coordinator for the Lions, Scott Linehan. But the Philly defense knows they've got a pretty good idea. He's having trouble holding on to the football. Expect a screen pass, and they rally to it. And no Reggie Bush the whole opening series. Lions will punt it. Jackson is back. Good punt in this weather. Jackson is going backwards. It's a nice punt by Sam Martin, the rookie, 4 4 hang time. And the Eagles will have their first possession on offense behind Nick Foles, who has had quite the historic season so far. Well, the one thing Kevin he does, he protects the football. And we talked about it in the open. He's not just being safe. He's got weapons outside in Deshaun Jackson and Riley Cooper, and he's utilizing them. He's taking the ball down the field. He's just making calculated good decisions and protecting the football, playing phenomenal football at the quarterback position. Now, here's what I'm fascinated by. The Eagles don't have the, the play call going to the helmet of Nick Foles. They use hand signals and cards on the sideline. How can you see that as a player? It's going to be tough. Riley Cooper told us it's tough when you're on the far side in normal weather. In this weather, it could be very tough. Foles going to throw it, get it to Brent Sell at the tight end, who eludes one tackle, is going to pick up a couple yards. This Lions defense coming off their best effort last week against Green Bay, allowing 126 total yards, and you see against the run, they've been outstanding. I mean, that's total domination. 40 yards, 1.9 yards per attempt. It starts up front, and Dominican Sue, Nick Fairley, beast up front for the Detroit defense. And movement. Get our first penalty of the day. Willie Young jumped offside, see if he was baited. Neutral zone infraction defense, number 79. It's a five yard penalty, it's second down. Just smart football. Watch Willie Young right there, the hard count. Great inflection by Nick Foles, draws Willie Young. Layton Johnson does a great job not moving, clearly on the Detroit Lions. So second down, and we'll call it three. Chris Polk, the third string running back, is at the top of your screen. Interesting alignment. And Deshaun Jackson in the backfield. And they pitch it to Jackson. Lions are ready for it. Jackson's in trouble. And he loses big. This is something we saw in practice. And I think it sounded really good during the week, but in this type of weather, hard to put your foot in the ground and get downhill. And that, frankly, is a little bit of a concern, I think, if you're Philly. A lot of what they do is stretching people horizontally. And in this weather, you need mutters. You need to go downhill. Under, 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 under. Ball's on the 30-yard line. They need to get to the 41 on a third down. He's going to hand off. McCoy has it well shy of the first down, and the Eagles will punt it away. But Kevin, that right there, that's downhill running. That's the style that I think they're going to have to employ, the tr traditional look. Nick Foles under center and between the tackles, right into the teeth of the strength of this Detroit Lions defense. I mean, you have two of the top three offenses yardage-wise in this game. It's fascinating to see what the weather is going to do to that. Already a couple of three and outs. Jones gets the punt off, and this one's a wiggler, and it slides out of bounds. So now Matthew Stafford will take another shot at it in these crazy conditions. Megatron awaits.
Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. All the snow blowers in the world aren't going to help. It is coming down. Now, this is awesome. That's Fox's technology showing you the yard lines because obviously on the field, they're invisible. Joy Bell plotting forward with a nice gain on first down. We'll give him eight on that play. Molly McGrath is a third member of our broadcast team. So how's the weather down there, Molly? Oh, it's a little cold and it's very, very snowy, Kevin. You're talking <laughs> about how the weather is already affecting this game. Well, it's already affecting the Lions for sure. Reggie Bush supposedly slipped on the field during pregame warmups. He left warmups early and he is questionable to return in this game with a calf injury. Kevin. Wow, that's big. He has a calf injury and missed the whole week of practice. Molly didn't see it. And a fumble by Stafford. Bell falls on it, I think. And he did get it back, back at the original line of scrimmage, so a third and ten. John Molly didn't see it, but the hashtag missed in the nook of the north there. That's the weather. <laughs> well, and I think Matthew Stafford didn't see that ball through the snow as well. And you're talking about the Detroit Lions, a team that has the third most turnovers in the National Football League in good weather. Will now try to handle the ball in this weather. Mistakes are compounded. Matthew Stafford said it. He's struggling to handle this early on. It's a third and we'll call it 10. This is just wild. Stafford has time for a man rush over the middle. And he's got Megatron who falls forward for the first first down of the game. Well, there's one guy indoors, outdoors, sunny weather, snow. Calvin Johnson can play some football. You look at him. Keep his feet underneath him. Make sure he secures the football. And then that big body falling forward. Such a great football football player is Calvin Johnson. He demonstrates it right there. They will measure. It looks certainly falling forward like he had this. But again, who knows with this weather. Trying to figure out where to <laughs> mark the middle of that chain, which they hold to bring out to make this an accurate measurement. The forecast today was for some snow and sleet, not for a blizzard. Yeah. And now I, I just figured out, Kevin, Molly McGrath does such a great job on our crew when she fills in, but Erin Andrews, now I know why she couldn't join us this week. See that? She knew something about the weather. We didn't. Yeah, he's got the first down. Or well, this time allowed them to try and clear out the goal line and some of the yard lines down the field. Look at our camera folks working so hard it's Dan Steele who's by the way a San Diego native sorry Dan <laughs> we don't have this in San Diego Dan by the way Calvin Johnson it's funny you know everybody it's really hard to see from everywhere as you can see from that shot Calvin Johnson looks like the big bumble from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger he's so big he stands out to the first first down and now the Lions on the move on the 45 and a half. It's Joyk Bell with a game of, we'll call it three. You know, Molly mentioned Reggie Bush, who had a calf injury during the week, tweaked it in pregame. Well, Joyk Bell is your mutter. That's, you, you talked on one of his runs, you described it as plotting. He's that type of player. He keeps his feet underneath him, he gets downhill. He's the perfect type of back for this situation. He really is. I mean, he's had a good year, a good compliment to Reggie Bush. And, you know, Bush has had a good year running the ball, too. That's the thing. Everyone thinks of him as a receiver, but he's on pace for maybe his best year. It's Calvin Johnson in motion. And it's Bell with some room. And he breaks the tackles out across for what looks like a first down. We have our first game break of the day. Kurt Menefee, take it away. Well, we figured you'd like a highlight where you could see all the players there. A battle of first place teams, Cincinnati and Indy. Marvin Jones and the Bengals strike first. 29-yard touchdown. It's 7-0. Back to frigid Phil, Kevin, John, and Molly. Kurt, thank you. I think that's Reggie Bush with the hood on. And again, certainly when you lose a weapon like that. But, John, you made the point. You know, today, of all days, might be the day you can kind of get away with it. Lions have a couple of first downs on this drive, and it's Bell. And a 
Good tackle by D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico Ryans has been outstanding in this new system under the defensive coordinator Billy Davis. It looks like the D'Amico Ryans from three, four years ago. He's moving fast. He's tackling with great skill. And the quarterback of this defense, he does a lot for this defense, both from the neck up and with his skill on the field. It's Connor Barwin. He's had a terrific year for Philadelphia. Another fumble, and Stafford falls on it. I'll give you an idea just how tough it is to handle out there. That's the third snap bubble. Two of them under center, one from the shotgun that Matthew Stafford and his longtime center, Dominic Riola, have had. They're having trouble in this weather, and I can't really blame them. Hard to execute something as simple as the quarterback center exchange in this type of weather. Rookie right tackle Adrian Waddle has gone out for the Lions. Jason Fox, fourth year man from Miami, now in at right tackle. Calvin Johnson down here at the bottom of our screen. Play clock at one. They're not going to get it off. Question is, did the officials see it? I don't think they saw it. And incomplete. He did see it. He stopped the play. Did they? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in, in defense, it's hard to see Ed Hockley and his crew, but the players don't even know it. But the back judge is now getting up to Ed Hockley, and the flag is down. Yeah, see, he's trying to get some order here. <laughs> Boy, this is this is fun. That's uh, a dead ball penalty. Delay of game before the ball was slapped. Snap. The play clock ran out. Offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. There was no play. Yeah, that's a killer. The foul happened before the snap. You know, the Eagles are hoping that he, he didn't see it, but now the Lions get a reprieve. And it affects everybody, Kevin. Ed Hockley, <laughs> the great official, says, dead ball before the ball was slapped. I mean, snapped. <laughs> Frozen jaw syndrome. So the penalty moves it back to the Eagles' 49-yard line. This would be a third down and 15, and it is coming down even harder than it did at the beginning of this game. 6.40 to go first quarter. We're scoreless. Joyke Bell, the back with Stafford. It's Calvin Johnson, the top of your screen. No idea who he's matched up against. Pressure coming. Stafford has a completion. And he's inside the 30, down to the 25. It's Brandon Pettigrew, the tight end. And the Lions putting together a nice drive, converting a third and 15. Here's Pettigrew. He's going to get isolated on Kendricks. The linebacker does a nice job of using that size and strength to get some separation. And Stafford adjusting to the weather, throws a beautiful touch pass to Pettigrew, the big target across the middle. Just go sliding in this stuff. Well, Matt Stafford told us the weather is going to be a factor, and what you want in that is to get a fast start and not play from behind. Here's Bell, and just nowhere to go. Nowhere to run for Joy Bell that time. You know, Kevin, it, what he said is true, Matthew Stafford, but he, like us, was thinking this was coming in the second half. That's what the forecast said, and we thought we were just getting little flurries. Instead, it's dumping in Philly early. So this will be a second down and 11, a loss of one for Bell. Look how much snow was on the field. It's more than a quarter of the way up the football. Draw the joke down. And he's got no. Oh, he breaks through. Nifty running from Joy Bell. And now the ball is loose. And the Eagles say they have it. Well, certainly, Connor Barwin does have it. The ball was fumbled. Philadelphia ball, first down. We'll watch. 
There it comes. The ball is definitely out. Cedric Thornton is the guy who caused it. Far in the recovery. Eagles football scoreless in the first. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here's a uh, review of the fumble. Good luck, instant replay official. <laughs> I think it's out there. Right see, there. See his arm cave? I think that I think it's out right at that point. And Carwin, uh, Connor Barwin came up with it, so I don't know how in the world you'd overturn it. Great play by Cedric Thornton. Defense alignment hustling downfield, knocking the ball out. Then Connor Barwin locates the football. Kevin, I think the first time all year, Mike Pere Pereira can't help us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what do you say? Connor Barwin, sleeveless. Who, the ruling on the field stands as called. Philadelphia ball, first down. Yeah, I mean, you notice Ed Hockley couldn't say confirmed because he couldn't see it. So the only thing to do is to leave it there. Now, the Lions have fumbled four times already. They've recovered a few of them. Turnovers have been an issue, but you almost have to forgive it today. It's that nuts early on. So here are the Eagles second possession. LaShawn McCoy is the back. McCoy gets it and tries to bounce it outside. He is buried backwards. DeAndre Levy was there initially and then Ziggy Anza finished him off. The five yard loss. You're seeing more traditional style of football. This completely takes the Philadelphia Eagles out of that seacoast offense as Chip Kelly has dubbed it. We're not seeing the side to side plays where they stretch it horizontally more downhill plays. We'll see if they can adjust. Eagles are at their own 16 yard line. Running it again. And McCoy gets up to the 21. It's a gain of five but a third and long. Let's try and figure out how they're going to get these signals from the side. That's what they're looking at. You see all the players Nick Foles there's no communication that goes on they all look to the sidelines just like Nick Foles now they have practice they do have plan B for everything Nick Foles does have the communication system and they can't go to a plan B right now it looks like they're going business as usual I wonder if they might at some point so third and nine Foles is going to throw it incomplete he was looking for Riley Cooper who got kind of tangled up on the far side of the field with Mathis but no call and the Eagles will punt it away. That's clearly I think John slowing them down here. I mean trying to get the signals. It's not easy to see. Well there's no doubt you think about what how this offense is built. It's built on tempo. It's about getting to the line of scrimmage giving different looks and having it distract the opponent and then they have some tremendous players they like to get in space. None of that's possible in this type of weather. Donnie Jones. Good booming kick. Wow. Ross backpedaling. It's a good block. Ross leaping over people into the snow, still on his feet, but then shoved out of bounds. What a punt through these blizzard like conditions. 53 yards. And then Ross with a nice return. Colt Anderson on the tackle. Like to go out and play in the snow? This is a game for you. Scoreless from Philly in the first. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Built free by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. And by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Came into this game talking about the top two offense or two and three in the league. And the weather has changed everything. I mean, that's what you're looking at because it's insane. I mean, there's two inches of snow on the field and it is snowing hard in Philadelphia. The Lions third possession. They put together a 10 play drive last time but fumbled. And they start out on their own 40 with Joyke Bell pushing forward and a gain of we'll call it five. Kevin I think one thing that you know in fairness to Detroit everyone thinks about them and Calvin Johnson and Matthew Stafford explosive throwing the football. This is a football team that ran for 240 yards mm. on Thanksgiving last week against the Green Bay Packers. They're very capable of running the football and their style frankly lends to running it in this type of weather more so than does Phillies. You don't think about that because they're a dome team but you're right. And Bell had his best career game last week with 94 yards rushing. He's got 28 so far. He gets it again. 
on a second down and he spins his way near the first down right around midfield. See the NFC ranks. This is an explosive offense yards per game first but some critical areas third down red zone Matthew Stafford likes to allude to these as the money downs. They're very good this year as well and then explosiveness look at that 52 20 plus plays extremely explosive. A lot of that probably goes out the door in this type of weather. We told you about the right tackle of the Lions while he's got an elbow injury questionable return so Jason Fox remains in the game. And now the Lions getting some traction with the run game. It's Bell again with a four yard carry. John, how equipped are you? Yeah, the Lions have run the ball, but this is different now. I mean, they've, they've, this is changing gears. How equipped are you just with a week of practice to adapt this much to a changing game plan? Well, football coaches pride themselves on covering every situation, but this is clearly, this was not in the forecast. It was supposed to start at three, and it was supposed to be a little bit of snow. Instead, you've got inches upon inches of snow, so this took both teams by surprise. Fake it, and Johnson's going to fire over the middle and complete. He was looking for Burleson. And he could not get his footing to try and leap for the high pass. And one thing Stafford is, he's got a big arm, but he's also highly accurate. You're going to see Burleson come across the field wide open in the middle of the field. There's what the conditions are doing. Matthew Stafford not accustomed to throwing in this. The ball sails on him. John, who is accustomed to throwing this, by the way? Charlie Checkdown? <laughs> he might be. <laughs> Very possible. Big third down on the Eagles 46. Plenty of time. Stafford's going to air it out deep for Johnson. He's got it. Calvin Johnson makes the catch down around the 10 yard line. Kerry Williams on the coverage with a face full of snow for Megatron. Well, there's Calvin Johnson and there's the explosiveness of this offense. He eats up the space on Kerry Williams a perfectly thrown football by Matthew Stafford and as I told you inside outside Calvin Johnson Megatron he's going to make plays. How did he see it. <laughs> he had one eye. Johnson slid down to the 10 but he was actually down at the 14. Kevin Ogletree in the game for the Lions at receiver top of your screen. It's George Bell. And he's going to get maybe a yard. Patrick Chung there first. <laughs> I tell you, that looks fun. <laughs> that looks fun. I mean, there are kids all across America, not in San Diego, but kids in this part of the country that are out doing that same thing. And, Calvin's got a face full of snow. <laughs> His pictures are incredible today by our crew as that should be the final play of the first quarter. But the Lions threatening to score the game's first points. That's the end of the Snowy first conditions and sticking in Philadelphia. Scoreboard without a point thus far after one quarter of play. Start of the second quarter from Philadelphia. It has been quite the snowstorm here. A lot more than everyone expected, but it's a packed house and a playoff field. Jim Schwartz and the Lions has moved the ball really in the snow. Now a second and ten right around the Eagle 13. We're going to give to Bell on the draw, and Bell works it down to the 10. Gain of three and a third down coming up. You know, Kevin. The Detroit Lions, very good red zone football team, fifth in the league. One of the reasons, these aren't Lions, these are giraffes. Chris Durham, 6'6", Foria, 6'7", Calvin Johnson, 6'5", Pettigrew, 6'5". Those are the targets that Matthew Stafford, they don't make corners, they don't make safeties that big. On a third and seven, they can get a first down just outside the three. Chris Durham, top of your screen, Calvin Johnson to the bottom. The draw to Bell. And Bell is wrapped up for no gain. And they wait, there's a fumble. At least the Eagles say so. And the signal is Philadelphia football. So for the second time, the Lions go down the field with a tremendous drive and fumble at the end of it. And, and what you're seeing, I know we have 
elements and factors, but this is Detroit Lions football. They move it, they move it, they move it, but they beat themselves. We talked about it in the open. It's biting them here today. Brandon Graham stripped at Eagles football. So today's game on Fox is sponsored by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. By the new windows. One experience for everything in your life. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Lions had a 10-play drive and then fumbled. And an 8-play drive on the 10 and just fumbled again. Look at that. Now, yes, it's very difficult out there, but John... 19 turnovers the last six games for the Lions. That's why they're seven and five and not with ten wins right now, really. It's their Achilles heel. They're so talented, so explosive. It's the one thing that bites them. A little bit of excuse today, but it's symbolic of their entire season. Falls has a year. He's gonna throw nobody there but Lions incomplete. He was looking for Jackson, but he was behind the play. Let's check back in with Bell's fumble. And if you look at Bell, it's not for lack of trying. He's protecting that thing with two hands. It's tough in these conditions. The ball swells. It gets slick in the snow. But you got to find a way to get it done. Jimmy Johnson in our open talked about distractions for a team that has tended to be undisciplined in the past. How are they going to respond to it? They've struggled. Riley Cooper, bottom of your screen. Boy, it goes nowhere. This is a hard feel for him who likes to jump cut all the time. Let's get a game break. Check in with Joel Clack. Kevin, we go 99 miles to the southwest to Baltimore. Same elements. Joe Flacco to Ed Dixon. His first TV catch of the season. 7-0 Ravens. Is Molly building a snowman out there or what? I think the snow is over Molly's head already, Joel. By the 99 miles, he calculated that perfectly. Third down for Foles. A lot of time again for Cooper. He hauls it in, I believe. No. It hit the ground incomplete. And the Eagles have had the ball now, and they've had to punt it after three and outs every time. Mathis on the coverage. Well, Foles puts a catchable ball up there, but Rasheen Mathis does a fantastic job getting that left hand out there and stripping the ball from Riley Cooper. Really good defensive Back play by Rasheen Mathis, the veteran corner for the Detroit Lions. Donnie Jones, the punter from his own end zone, he unleashed a 53-yarder earlier. It's Jeremy Ross back to receive. Ross will let it bounce. And the Eagles will cover it. I think that's around the 43. So the defense for Detroit has been good. A 51-yard punt. Lions and Eagles, scoreless in snowy Philly. This is what the players and the officials see here in Philadelphia, and everyone that stands. So it's really, uh, and us for that matter, now this is with our technology to show you where the ball is. I guessed it was around the 43. I was wrong. It's more around the 37, 38 after that punt by Jones. So that's where the Lions will start. Theo Riddick is in the backfield now. He's a rookie out of Notre Dame. Six round traffic. Built a little snowman too. Lions have really dominated, but they fumbled twice at the end of long drives, and that's why we're scoreless. And Riddick goes nowhere on first down. Just to give you an idea of how this storm came in. Big picture camera provided by Nationwide Insurance. So this is earlier before the game. And then we take you about an hour before it starts going, and then it's at noon, right? And a kickoff at 1 o'clock, go a little bit further forward. Now look, snow is covering everything. It's on the cameras, it's on the seats. Got very heavy in the first quarter. The actual snowfall is dissipating now, but the field is still a mess. Fumble again, the sixth by the line. Stafford batted in the air and incomplete. Trent Cole got his hands on it, I believe, but it falls to the ground. Third and ten. <laughs> it's just so difficult to hold on to the football and then once you drop it forget about throwing it good luck you see Matthew Stafford the play goes for the fumble the play action the ball gets hit and it's just a mess down there <laughs> Matt Stafford adjusting to it but you see it bite him just struggling to possess the football Third and ten. 
Stafford's going to air it out, and he's incomplete. He was looking for Doran Dickerson. He's a third-string tight end, but he couldn't make the catch. There's Dickerson working against the nickel corner. Boykin, but this is what you like by Stafford. What you're going to get in these elements is you're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. Even Calvin Johnson, we saw that. So if you can put it up, these bigger receivers for Detroit can make some hay. A little stumble on the punt try, and now a wobbler. And Deshaun Jackson runs up thinking about touching it, but won't. And the <laughs> Eagles will take over in their own territory somewhere. Still scoreless in Philly. Today's game is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Look at the snow piling up on the goalposts, and that's what's on the field. I mean, that last punt literally died in a mound of snow, and the Eagles' offense hasn't been able to do a thing. A lot of time. Foles looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Houston. Running far side, still on his feet. And out of bounds at the 20. The first interception of the year for Nick Foles and the Lions in business at the Philly 20-yard line. Well, Kevin, you said it. He's been perfect. He's been flawless this season. And watching that, you can't say the weather didn't affect it. The ball sails on him. Nick Foles, a big guy with a big hand, but look at that ball sail. Sails across the middle, high balls in the NFL across the middle, turn into interceptions. Chris Houston just hangs on for dear life. See Ziggy Anza getting the legal block on Nick Foles. So Chris Houston, who had been out for these Lions, coming back this week and making the interception his second of the year. Now Detroit. First and 10 on the Eagle 20. It's Calvin up top. They give a handoff and nothing doing that time. That play, the tackle was not by Fletcher Cox, but Fletcher Cox made that play for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's an impressive player. He controls the middle of the field. He's a guy that could play in any scheme. And I think his potential's limitless for these Eagles playing big time football for him. Joy Bell just had to come out of the game because he lost his shoe and you have no shot of putting it back in on the field. He barely found it in the snow pile. So Riddick is in there on a second and ten. Burleson stays on his feet and fights forward for a gain of about eight down to the 12. And they'd be wise to continue to do that. This is a play. It's just a little smoke route, bear pass, whatever you want to call it. But the Philadelphia corners, they struggle to tackle in space. Those type of plays have given the Eagles fits all years. Bradley Fletcher, Kerry Williams on the other side, they tr st tr <laughs> struggle just like I am to tackle in space. They ought to take advantage of it. Third and two. Blitz coming, hit as he throws, incomplete. He was looking for Durham. Stafford got knocked down, the ball a little behind him. Now do you think about going here with these conditions? It appears not. Akers trots on the field, but now we'll go back to the bench. <laughs> so they will go. He took about three steps on, and someone thought better of it. Pulled him back. Remember the height advantage. You've got big receivers for the Detroit Lions. Put it up. Give them a chance to make a play. Joy Bell back in at tailback. Calvin Johnson in the slot. It's fourth and two. You get it out to Bell in space. First down and more. Sliding inside the five. And a first and goal for Detroit. Kevin, right before our eyes, you can see Matthew Stafford getting a better feel for these elements. His hands getting warmer, going through his progression. Nice, accurate ball to Joy Bell, and he plots through that snow for the first down.
Bell got the shoe back on just in time and he gained 10 and now a first and goal at the two. They give it to Bell again up the middle. Touchdown Detroit. Detroit deciding to help with the extra point. But the Detroit Lions, they're a good football team. So long as they protect the football. That time they drove the field, and it looks if, as if Jim Schwartz is leaving Matthew Stafford going for two. Doesn't want to send Hakers out there with the mechanics that go into a simple extra point. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, a two by, I understand the field conditions are bad, but hmm, interesting call. There's no chart for this that says go for two. This is just the weather, and they think they have a better shot playing the percentages in the elements. Riddick and Bell in the backfield of Stafford. He's going to throw it, tipped, and Bell. Catches two point conversion good. It's eight nothing Detroit. And so the Lions convert. First, it was the interception with Chris Houston. Activated today, got him down to 20. They converted a big fourth down, and then Joy Bell powers in his seventh touchdown of the year. He also caught the two. It's eight nothing Lions. 10 02 to go in the half. <laughs> well, you need any kind of help, John, right? Well, everyone has a role, in particular in this type of weather. Here's the backup offensive lineman during the break. <laughs> in New England, years ago, they brought the guy in the in the go-kart out to clear it, and the blower, they bring offensive linemen. <laughs> the path is somewhat cleared, and Morton actually gets a pretty respectable kick that dies in the mound of snow in the end zone, and the Eagles will start on their own 20. The Eagles on this four game win streak have only turned it over one time. Foles throwing the pick his first of the year which led to the Lion touchdown. It took Mother Nature to get Nick Foles to throw a pick. But he's going to have to figure out and you talk to Chip Kelly. This is called a spread offense because they want to spread the field. They want to use every ounce of space on that field in these elements. I don't believe you can do it. This is predicated on getting speed and space, and they're going to have to figure out a way to adjust, or they're not going to be able to keep up with the Lions. The draw to McCoy, who finally has some space, and McCoy gains a give mates on first down for McCoy. And here's what drives this offense. The two Shans, Deshaun Jackson over a thousand yards, LaShawn McCoy. But you think about both these guys, smaller guys, their game is predicated where they hurt you is with speed and space, with quickness, putting their footing gap in, in the ground and cutting hard to do in this weather. McCoy 15 yards rushing before that carry, which will net the Eagles a first down, their first of the game. And that's what he's going to have to do, LaShawn McCoy. He's going to have to become a mutter for this game and take the yards that are there. Not try to make every play a long run, get four yards, get five yards. That's the adjustment LaShawn McCoy has to make. He goes on the run, 31. And they give to McCoy again, who eluded the first tackle, but give him one on the play. Ziggy Anzo has had a spectacular rookie year and a guy that is an amazing story. He's played one year of organized football in his life, basically, John. I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive what he's doing. Seven sacks for the Lions. Unbelievable talent. Would have more. He's been out a couple games, and he's just learning to play football. His future is so bright for the Detroit Lions. Foles drop it and then gets dropped. That was Willie Young who will get credit for the sack. His fourth. We talk about the Lions, but the Eagles are struggling as well. The Eagles, who have protected the football so well, particularly of late, struggling with the simple quarterback center exchange. One of the officials just slipped. Bryce Brown checks into the game at running back. First time McCoy's gotten a rest, and he'll get it. 
And Brown powers forward on a third and long, but that's not nearly enough, and the Eagles will punt it again. I think it's really a concern for this offense, and particularly if they fall behind even more, is unless the conditions change, what makes this offense go, the speed in space, it's hard to execute in these elements. Donnie Jones has done a nice job punting today. Rasheen Mathis and Jeremy Ross both back to receive. First time Detroit's done that. It was a low one, though. Mathis going to let it go. It's just too hard to pick up and risk fumbling. And the Lions will start it out on their own 41. The snow has hindered Chip Kelly's fast-paced offense. The Lions with the only score of the game through this tough weather. 8-0 Detroit in the second. Fox UFC Saturday returns this week as Demetrius Johnson defends his World Flyweight Championship against Joseph Benavidez live on Fox. Coverage begins Saturday at 8 Eastern only on Fox. It's been crazy. It's been fun. And there's been about three and a half inches of snow, if not more, on the field. The snow has lightened, but it was really coming down through the first quarter. And it's Lions up 8 nothing. With Calvin Johnson now with two catches and 43 yards, moves past Herman Moore John at 28 years old as the Lions' all time leading receiver. At 28. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It's Chris Durham in motion, play with Matt Stafford at Georgia. Here's Joyke Bell. And Joyke, tough sled in there. But Calvin Johnson is just. Had an insane career. Those are his numbers coming off the record breaking year that broke Jerry Rice's record last year. And you know, the greatest thing, we talked to him this week, and he said he didn't even know till last week that he was on the cusp of breaking that yardage, all time yardage record for the Detroit Lions. He's the most humble superstar I've ever been around. Such a great role model for kids and just a freak of nature on the field. And yeah, he did not want to talk about himself on. Our time with him this week. You're right. Humble indeed. It's Bell again. And Bell's going to move it forward to the 40. Here's a look at Calvin Johnson, who is, well, a freak of nature. Let's be honest. How can you be 6'5, 240 and run a 4 3? I have no idea. Right. You run a 4 3, 5 40 and borrow shoes at the combine. And in that vertical jump, he jumps. 42 and a half inches and he uses it on the field. There's other guys that can do that But the total combination and his ability to transfer it to the field simply incredible On third down Stafford's got a year and now over the middle nice play is knocked away It was Michael Kendricks who came in and knocked it down and the Eagles will get it back Hard to generate a pass rush in this type of weather with the footing. Burleson's there. I think Stafford making extra sure he can get a grip on that ball. He fires it in a great break on the football by Kendricks to get the Eagles off the field. Sam Martin, the rookie, gets off a booming punt. And it'll die down at the 11. Both punters have done a pretty magnificent job today in these conditions. 49 yard punt, no return. It's the Lions up eight to nothing in the snowball in Philly. Kevin, this was the last punt return. You got an explosive weapon in Deshaun Jackson, but he has no intention of ever catching this punt. Hands in the hand warmer, never takes him out. And that's what happens. You get Weapons like Deshaun Jackson negated in this type of weather. His style just does not lend to it. Eagles have 16 total yards in the weather today. It's McCoy with a big hole in his best run. And LaShawn McCoy has a first down. A gain of 14 for McCoy. And that's the difference. We're so used to seeing LaShawn McCoy run east and west. He's learning, he's getting downhill and doing so quickly. Tough to do against this Detroit Lion defense, but they need to stick to it. Give it to him again, stutter step, nice move, good run. Game 
Give him six on that play. Make it seven. You're seeing it. It looks like they talked about let's get our tempo back. Let's get back to who we are. We may have to make some adjustments in the type of plays we run, but they're trying to run plays quicker because that's the way this team is wired. While the snow dissipating a bit has helped their tempo pick up a little bit too, at least on this drive. Boy able to cut and has another Eagles first down. Still on his feet. And sliding down is McCoy. Quick update, game break with Joe Platt. Kevin, some scary moments in Baltimore. The reigning MVP, Adrian Peterson, out in the flat, goes down awkwardly. Rodney and Payne on the sideline. He's rushed for a little over 1,200 yards on the season. Taken away on a cart. No official word yet from Minnesota. We'll get you a status update as soon as we get word. Kevin. No, no. Hopefully that's not what it looks like. Thanks, Joel. First and 10 is Chris Polk. Getting the carry, and he goes nowhere. And it looks and it bodes well for the Philadelphia Eagles. The last couple of runs, LaShawn McCoy starting to get the feel of putting his foot in the ground in this type of weather. The snow is easing up, and that would certainly benefit this Eagles offense, who clearly have struggled in this weather. Give it to Polk again. Big hole the middle and Polk has a run that's going to put him about a yard and a half shy of the first down. This Philadelphia offensive line a very underrated group. They've been healthy all year. They're coordinated. They play well together and Polk he is a mother. He's a downhill runner. Third and one penalty and See if the Lions jumped or if they were baited. I think they jumped. This would give the Eagles a first down if that's the case. Encroachment defense in the 98. Five yard penalty results in a first down. It's on Nick Fairley. Really believe it's Sue, and Sue not only jumped off sides, but he goes ahead and swipes at Nick Foles' throwing arm, and Nick Foles feeling it in that elbow. It was fairly and Sue, but watch Sue go after that ball. If I were his offensive lineman, I'd been right there asking Sue about that. In Lions territory now. And McCoy goes ahead for one. Time of factor with 3.07 to go on the half, each team with three timeouts. John, if you gauge the highlights we're seeing from Detroit, the storm's coming from the south, so it will appear maybe in the second half the snow will be gone. So you know it could be big. How they clear the field at the break? <laughs> Seriously. No, you're right. And you know, certainly at home, Philly, I bet Chip Kelly get everybody out there and shovel this thing. Let's clear this field. Entire Philly sanitation department waiting outside for the break. Falls on second. Lofting it for Jackson. Is he inbounds? He certainly is. First down, Philadelphia. It's really interesting because you're watching players adjust on the fly to something they're not accustomed to. Deshaun Jackson doing a great job in the elements of keeping his feet in, I think. <laughs> It's usually the white that's the sideline. It's the green today. And Nick Foles starting to get a grasp on how to throw the football in this weather. From the Lion 27, it's McCoy. And McCoy gets inside the 25. That may take us to the two minute warning here. This is the first drive that we've seen any rhythm from this Philadelphia offense. The rhythm starting to happen. This offensive line changing their style a little bit, but being effective running the ball to the teeth of this Detroit Lion defense. Two minute warning from Philadelphia. Eight nothing Lions. First time all day the Eagles have been able to get their footing on offense, and I mean that literally. As they trail at eight nothing, two minutes to go, first half. Ball at the 24. Falls to throw it. It's Jackson. Good stiff arm, and Jackson has a first down before he's thrown out of bounds. Deshaun Jackson clearly adjusting. He's got his hands out of the hand warmers, and he's playing some football, getting this Philly crowd going. 
So the Eagles are going to mark this at about the 12. And they can get a first down out the two. McCoy, the single back, he'll get it. And it gets met and dropped. Nick Fairley. Fairley and Sue. You see him. Penetration is what kills any running game. And Nick Fairley and Indomitian and Sue do it better than anyone. Jason Kelsey, the center for the Philadelphia Eagles, said the best duo in the, in the, in the league. And Nick Fairley showing himself right there. Big drive for the Eagles of Fagan. Falls. Pressure coming from Fairley. Throw for Cooper. Knocked away. Mathis. A nice comeback to knock it down. And a third down is coming up. Nick Falls. He's going to go to his buddy Riley Cooper here and try to just trust him with his size. But I tell you, Rasheen Mathis, who played most of his career in Jacksonville, doing an outstanding job with his footing and play in this weather. See, Foles has been terrific in the red zone this year, not in these conditions. It's a third and 12. They can get a first down at the two. Set up a screen to Riley Cooper. And the Lions play it well. And now the Lions didn't try a field goal or even an extra point, but the Eagles just go for it. Chip Kelly's going to call timeout and think about it. It's Alex Henry, the Eagles kicker. And so Chip Kelly with a decision to make whether he'll try a field goal or try to go. On what would be about a fourth and seven. Let's get a preview of the halftime show out with LA. Kurt Menefee, take it away. Well, it may be snow at the game you're watching, but it's another sunny day here in Los Angeles. And coming up on the Visa halftime, the Colts and Bengals jockey for playoff positioning in the AFC, and the Chiefs go for win number 10. So, guys, you know what? Despite the fact it looks sunny, it's going to struggle to make 60 today. Brr. Kurt, that's so wrong, man. How can you do that to oh, us? Unbelievable. <laughs> Those guys have it rough in studio. They were, they were ordering their salads earlier when I called in, checked in during pregame. <laughs> that was pretty creative by the boys in L.A. Thanks, Kurt. So the Eagles faced with a fourth and seven. Looks like they're going. It's just so much snow, and it's so slippery on the field right now. We saw the Lions elected not to even try an extra point, but this is... This is a tough fourth down and a big play with 56 seconds to go in the half. <laughs> Got to get it to the two. Falls is all day. Throwing end zone jump ball. Cooper knocked away again by Mathis. And the Lions make a fourth down stand. Really give a lot of credit to Rasheen Mathis in this Lions secondary. They fake the bubble screen to Deshaun Jackson. Nick Foles pumps it. They think they're going to suck the defense up. Rasheen Mathis having none of it. And he's doing a really good job going up against the physical receiver in Riley Cooper. Has his hands on three balls today in that matchup. Rasheen Mathis clearly winning that matchup today for the Detroit Lions. And so a 13 play drive by Philadelphia goes to waste. And now the Lions with the football deep in their own territory. They do have three timeouts, but clearly a challenge moving in this weather. And hand it to Bell. Let's check in with Molly on the field. Thanks, Kevin. You're talking about how the weather is affecting this game, particularly the offense. Well, there's no wonder. I had a ruler brought out to me. Here on the sideline, if you stick the ruler into the ground, it's around four inches. I had one of the referees go out to the middle of the field and stick it to the highest point in the middle of the field. It is almost six inches of snow that has accumulated out there, and that's definitely affecting this game. Kevin? Oh, my. That's a great report. Six inches, John? <laughs> I tell you, it's been dumping. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's clearly affecting this game. I've actually been somewhat impressed. We've had fumbles all over the place. I think both teams have adjusted fairly well. This is tough. I mean, a little snow, that's doable. But this much snow, six inches, as we just heard, that's tough to deal with. And I think both have handled themselves somewhat well and are getting a little bit more of a feel as the game goes on. Now, 
the second and three Lions seem content just run it into the half with an eight nothing lead and we remind you this is a huge game. I mean each team with seven wins Lions in control of their own destiny and Philly and Dallas tied in the NFC East timeout Detroit will take a break with 39 seconds to go in the half Lions up in Philly. The Eagles called their final timeout not the Lions but with 39 seconds to go here. The Lions are in the victory formation because they don't want to turn it over and they can just run it out right here. And that's it. They don't have to run another play. Half over in Philadelphia, where the weather was a huge factor. The Lions with the only score of the game. Joyke Bell, a two yard run, and then the two point conversion to boot. Eight nothing is where we stand here at the break in Philly. Big game, couple of seven win teams, and the Lions at halftime with the lead in snowy Philly. Only weather that matters is whether they want it more than that. So a first half which was greatly affected by the weather as you heard Molly McGrath report up to six inches in the center of the field. I mean that's tough to run through for anybody. And so the Lions with the eight nothing lead over the Eagles as we start the third and a reminder you follow your favorite team on iTunes full games highlights more it's on iTunes dot com slash NFL. So we get set to start the third quarter. He's John. I'm Kevin and uh, the snow has calmed down a little bit but the field is. It's not really plowed that much better, John. What do you think in this second half? Yeah, I'm kind of shocked they didn't clear it because it too. certainly would behoove the home team, the Philadelphia Eagles. I've talked a lot about it in the first half. Their style is predicated on speed and space. Yeah. Slashing and cutting in space. You can't do that. You've got to become a downhill team. Detroit, a little more built to do that kind of style. We saw Philly, however, start to adjust, and that last drive created some rhythm. I think it's going to be about who can protect the football who can find a way to make a big play look for Calvin Johnson who had success in this weather to make some plays. man it seemed like the quarterbacks had time to throw it as well let's head down to the field check in once again with Molly McGrath thanks guys I talked to head coach Jim Schwartz at the half and uh, I talked to him about Reggie Bush's status he said that that was a pre-existing calf injury that he did re-agitate and he said um, today is not the day to test an injury he does not expect him to come back into the game today especially with the elements in the weather and he said that it's hard to predict anything in this game in the second half because of this weather so he's just going to play it by ear he wants his guys to take care of the ball and just play it out because of this awful awful weather today Kevin so Reggie Bush definitely not playing we showed him in the hood earlier and you know, obviously that's a factor we talk about his playmaking ability Lions won the toss and received to start the game so the Eagles will get it to start this second half Brandon Boykin back deep you can see the field is still got plenty of snow on it. And it'll die in the snow. Boykin will take it. Eagles on the 20. Look at the first half. No Reggie Bush. The Lions fumbling all over the place, and two of them deep in Eagles territory. And without those fumbles, I mean, they drove the ball at will up and mm -hmm. down the field. They had two turnovers from Joyke Bell in those first couple of drives. Matthew Stafford and Nick Foles both seem to be adjusting to the cold, finding a way to throw it. The snow flurries have subsided a little bit. We'll see if these offenses can make some ground in the second half. Well, the Eagles will start out on their own 20. Foles with time. Looking for Cooper, and he can't connect. That has been a tough connection all day long. And by the way, Mike Pereira checks in with us from L.A. And, and tells us, John, that technically you're not supposed to go out and clear the field. You're supposed to play in these current conditions. They clear the lines and the yard markers so you could spot the ball correctly. But you could see the yard lines obviously are from the Fox technology. But the officials kind of working blind here today. Falls again with time. He's going to run it for the first time and be sandwiched. By Nick Farley, fairly I should say, he's going to pick up four. Nick Foles has to find a way to get it to those many weapons that he has. You're going to see Nick Fairley <laughs> throw Foles into that snow. Maybe one benefit it softens the blow of Big Nick Fairley falling on him. 
negative is that you can't see outside half your helmet. <laughs> Eagles 0 for 5 on third down today, and they almost missed that handoff. McCoy on the sprint first down, Philadelphia. You're going to watch the center. Look at this is tough to do. Jason Kelsey going to go out in front of LaShawn McCoy, get the seal on DeAndre Levy. And LaShawn McCoy following Riley Cooper. Start to figure out this weather a little. Starting to look like the LaShawn McCoy we all know. He'll get it again and get wrapped up immediately. And Domican Sue. Well, here's in Domican Sue. We talked to Gunther Cunningham. You can double him. People try to bait him. He's having a fantastic season. As good a season as Indomitian Sue has had in this league, and that's saying something. Falls in trouble, just unloads, and then gets buried. He had to get rid of that rather quickly. Sue coming on the pressure. You know, and, and one thing that most don't know about Sue, he was elected team captain this year for the first time. It's a little bit different image within the team than he has maybe publicly. You know, and I've really, I mean, he's crossed the line on some occasions, stomping on people and kicking people. But he's an excellent football player. And I think he's really tried to adjust and adhere himself and his style of play to the NFL rules as they stand today. Jeff Mayle, a first-year receiver from Oregon, is in the game now. Foles going for Zach Ertz, but miscommunication. It's way over the head, incomplete. And again, the Eagles will punt it away. Yeah, and I don't even think it's miscommunication. Nick Foles having trouble throwing the football in this weather. We've seen him be so flawless throughout this season. And I joked earlier, but Mother Nature drew his first interception, but it's also causing the ball to sail on him. Surprises me because he's such a big guy with such big hands. You think he'd be able to control the ball, but he clearly is having trouble with it. Look at the hang time from Jones on the punt. He's had an outstanding day punting, and the Lions will start on their own 25. 38 yard punt by Jones. Falls has had trouble in this weather, so has everybody else. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. Now oh, they're trying to clear that field every break. They get at least the yard lines. But it's still a mess out there. Matthew Stafford with the numbers. Bell has run hard but fumbled twice. And Calvin Johnson. There's been some opportunities for him, I think. <laughs> Get his feet covered in snow. Unbelievable. And so the first possession for the Lions in the second half. They're going to run it to the hard charging bell. This game is clearly big with December with four weeks to go. There's the picture. The Lions controlling their own destiny in the NFC North. Eagles and Dallas are tied and they meet the final week of the regular season and then that monster game on Fox later today John Niners in Seattle. Yeah just you know Detroit's got a little bit of wiggle room but they clearly need to turn it turn it on as Stafford said this is go time. It's time to finish with the flurry Philadelphia they got to have this because they've got to win the division likely to get into the playoffs and they got to keep up with Dallas to do so. Bell one more time on a second down and pushing the pile forward. You know, the other thing is in the NFC North, the Packers losing again, and they haven't won without Aaron Rodgers, and they're fading. The Bears have a big game against the Cowboys tomorrow night, but Detroit beat them twice. So that's the one thing that Jim Schwartz and the Detroit Lions have done this season, and it always starts on the top of your goal: win your division, because it's automatically gets you in the tournament. They're four and one in their division, so they've done their job there. Third down and two. Stafford has time and he slings it to Bell who's got the first down. And he steps out of bounds. Whistle blows. He steps out of bounds. Kerry Williams on the hit. But the Lions move the chains. You watch Matt Stafford right here. Joyk Bell's going to run a swing route out to the side, but what Stafford's reading is Connor Barwin out in the flat. Barwin goes inside on the slant, and he dumps it off to Joyk Bell. 
Good stuff by Matthew Stafford. With the absence of Reggie Bush, Bells had a big call today. He's got the only touchdown of the game. This is Riddick, though. And a nice run by Riddick. Theo Riddick, the rookie from Notre Dame, is in the Eagles' territory for Trent Cole. Knocked him down. Again, Reggie Bush had a calf injury, re-aggravated it, slipping on this snow before the game. And as you heard Molly McGrath report, Jim Schwartz told her, not going to risk that today. And that's that last run, the last couple of runs we've seen Detroit, is what I'm talking stylistically, what sets up well. Downhill run right between the tackles. And they're having success doing it. Riddick, first down, Lions. I think that style of running game is something you need at this time of year. You're a dome team, but you may go out in inclement weather. And I really thought last game at Green Bay, excuse me, Green Bay on Thanksgiving at home, really was where everything came together other than the turnovers you rush for 240 yards seven sacks on defense a signature win for the Lions can they keep it up and can they protect the football to make all those other things they're doing so well shine Riddick remains in the game we're going to throw it but Durham dropped it well you know this Lions team talk about winning in the elements John and, and coming off that impressive win over Green Bay they haven't won a division in 20 years. They're in line to do that. But their last playoff win was 1992. That was a 38-6 win over Dallas with Eric Kramer at quarterback. It's been a long time for been these guys. a long, guys. long time. And Martin Mayhew, I think, has done an outstanding job building this roster. Mm -hmm. Everybody who watches them, you can see the talent. I think Jim Schwartz, you give him a lot of credit. Bell back in the game, gets the carry. And bring up a third down. Just finishing the thought. You give him a lot of credit because they've improved in some critical areas. All the critical areas, offensively, defensively, they're really good. One caveat being turnovers. Right. And they do, they don't pay as much attention to that as you'd think. They, they pride themselves on being aggressive. My only contention, I think you can be aggressive and protect the football. And I think that's where they got to go to be successful. Lions 40% on third down today. They came into the game sizzling at 54% the last three games. Bell gets stuffed, but I'd be hard pressed to think this isn't four down territory. Unless they decide to punt it, and they will. They're going to try and pin the Eagles deep. The way this game's going, maybe 8 nothing's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not what we expected at two of, the, of two of the most prolific offenses in the NFL. But these elements have dictated a low scoring football game in Philadelphia. So Martin will punt it away. A little drop kick. And Deshaun Jackson with a fair catch up at the 11. And so the defense for Philadelphia bends but doesn't break. Catch a little snowflake on the tongue if you can. Nick Foles back on the field next. It's really a game where stats mean nothing. I mean, that's what they're doing today. But it's just been impossible with so much snow on the field. The ball slick. And now Nick Foles, his Eagles trailing eight to nothing. The give to McCoy. He's got 64 yards in the day, dancing around and buried for a big loss. That side to side, east and west, will not work in this game. It looked like the Eagles had started to adjust, and right there they go sideways. And it's just the penetration by Indomitian and Sue forces LaShawn McCoy, but he's got to take. Sometimes know that a minus one gains a lot better than a minus five. McCoy, big hole up the middle and gets tripped up. That could have been an even bigger play. I think it was Bentley who came in and got a hand on it, but it's a third and manageable for Philadelphia. 12 yard run. And here it is the blocking up front, the double team. On Fairley, that opens up the huge crease right there. And LaShawn McCoy, north and south. 
Now Bryce Brown in the game on third down for Philadelphia. Brown on the blitz from the Lions, and they make the play. Lewis Delmas, the safety, with a tremendous play, and the Eagles will punt. Really got to like that by Gunther Cunningham. The call, he's going to bring Delmas off the corner, unaccounted for by Jason Peters, the left tackle, and what a play by Lewis Delmas. And again, the Eagles not used to this, not running the type of plays they are accustomed to using. Nick Foles under center a bunch, hasn't been under center a bunch this season. It's Ross, returnable punt if he gets footing. And he does. Jeremy Ross through the snow. On his slate of the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. A 58 yard punt return for Jeremy Ross. Hard to find a way to make big plays in this game. And terrific job by the return team, but really just by Jeremy Ross keeping his footing in this weather. You see all the Eagles chasing him, but Jeremy Ross, outstanding return. There's Ogletree on Brandon Boykin doing a nice job just mirroring him, staying in the way. And Jeremy Ross does the rest through those six inches of snow. And the Lions, like they did earlier, because of the field conditions, will go for two. They converted on the first try on a pass to Joy Bell. Bell is the back here. Calvin Johnson, bottom of your screen. This is guy, Joseph Foria, that Stafford has liked in the red zone all year. Looking for him incomplete. He went that way, but Kerry Williams had good coverage. And the special teams now for the Lions. Gives them a big boost, and in this weather, 14-0 could be difficult. Lions defense says, uh-uh, we'll hand it to this guy, Jeremy Ross. Who needs a shovel when you got that kind of speed? 14-0 Detroit. Jeremy Ross almost broke a couple last week against Green Bay, and he does it here today in Philly. First career punt return touchdown for him. It had been 147 games since a punt return touchdown for the Lions from Eddie Drummond. And Ross gives Detroit a 14 nothing lead. The Eagles fans looking for something from their special teams. It's Polk who will take it out to the 25. Lions in command in the snow. Third quarter in Philadelphia. Never be without football and get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download it now. Along with John Lynch and Molly McGrath, I'm Kevin Burkhardt in snowy Philadelphia where the Lions have a commanding 14-0 lead, at least in this weather. And Foles going to swing it out to McCoy. And the Lions are on top of that after a couple-yard gain. Really young with the tackle. American Idol looking for the next superstar. Join Jennifer Lopez, Keith Urban, Harry Connick Jr., along with Ryan Seacrest. They search for the best new talent. American Idol's most exciting season yet begins Wednesday, January 15th on Fox. It's McCoy who was met by Ashley Palmer for no game. I'll tell you what, this front seven for the Detroit Lions really starting to take this game over. You hear the pads popping, you see Sue in the middle just saying you're not coming in here and then on the edges Glover Quinn comes up and finishes the Sean McCoy this group's starting to play we've got the Eagles in another third down they're only one of eight on third and there's some movement there it hurt Foles on the hard count might have gotten his own guys Eagles have not had a flag thrown against them all day. There's only been three penalties. And in fairness, it's been pretty hard to see anything. And Hockley and the crew doing a nice job to kind of keep this game flowing. Encroachment defense over 69. Five yard penalty. It's third down. 
I think he meant Mill Willie Young at 79, not 69. Or 96. <laughs> Correction, my mistake. Yeah, there we 69 go. is the offense. Ball started offense. Oh! Reached out and touched the defender. Five yard penalty, it's third down. Well, that's actually a bigger mistake. <laughs> that changes everything instead of third and short, third and long. Kevin Mathis says, Who, me? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> See, Evan Mathis has got the tape Vulcan grip on his hand there. <laughs> a third and 11. Lions number one in the league on third down defense. Foles throwing far side, first down to Sean Jackson. And the Eagles convert only their second, third down of the game. They're going to have to find a way to do more of it because the D line of the Detroit Lions starting to make it tough to run. And Deshaun Jackson, Riley Cooper, they're going to have to make some plays on the perimeter, and Nick Foles is going to have to find a way in this snow and wind to throw the football effectively. Time for Foles and a lot of it to air it out deep down the field. He's got Cooper. He makes the catch. Riley Cooper with the grab at the 20. Well, there you go. Ask and you shall receive. He finds a way to get out there in front. And the old baseball player, the old outfielder, looks like a center fielder. Locating the football, Nick Foles puts it out there and lets Riley Cooper make the play. He was drafted in the 15th round by the Phillies at one point. You're right, John showed it. Foles on first, throwing for the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. It's Jackson. Yard score, and the Eagles back in the game. Now let's watch the back of the end zone. Okay, now it looks like Deshaun Jackson goes out of the end zone. The question is, was he pushed by Chris Houston? If so, he's got to reestablish. We'll see if the officials take a look at that. John, how can you even tell where the line is? <laughs> That's the hard I part. Mean, they're, they're reviewing it as they do every score. We are reviewing the ruling on the field. But even with the snow cleared off, how can you possibly tell where the back line is? I don't think you can. I think this is standing. But we'll, we'll take more looks during the break and let you know when we come back. Big play review right now. There's, this is standing. That's a shot of the end line. And so with that, I don't know how you can possibly the overturn it. There you go. Yeah, they took a take a look at it, but uh, you know, it's got to be indisputable. Remember, ruled a touchdown on the field and you just simply can't see the end line. By the way, how about the drive from Nick Foles? I don't know if that ball was even intended for Deshaun Jackson, but four for four for 79 yards. And now the Eagles going for two. Down 14 6 here in the third. No one's even attempted a kick in this weather. And Foles throws it low for McCoy. He had him. But he threw it into the snow, and the two is no good. As we bring in Mike Pereira from L.A. Mike, what's your call there? I mean, can you make a call when you can't even see the end line? I don't think you can, but you know, that shot that we showed right down the end line shows that the white line, if you can see it, is all the way to the back of the clearing area. So, you know, to me, he probably didn't step out of bounds, but there's, there's nothing conclusive on anything when you get, especially when you're trying to find the line. I think he does the right thing by not overturning this. All right, Mike, thanks. And so that's the call, and that's why from our rules expert, Mike Pereira. Kevin, you mentioned it. That ball was clearly intended for Riley Cooper. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson just heads up. He's running a post, really clearing the area for Riley Cooper. Locates the ball, the overthrow with the inclement weather, and he's the beneficiary because he finds one in his gut for a touchdown. So the Eagles offense, which wasn't doing much, all of a sudden explodes and goes down the field in two seconds with the bomb to Cooper and then the touchdown to Jackson. 
And now you've got a one score game again with 405 to go in this third quarter. You know the snow coming down it's still flurrying but that's not the factor anymore it's just the field and it will be a factor for the rest of the game. Looks harder in that shot than it does to us up here in the booth. Talk about home field advantage KB. Earlier we saw the Detroit Lions send a bunch of backup offensive linemen to clear a little kicking area. The Philadelphia Eagles just brought the shovel out for Alex Henry. They got him a little clearing area to kick the ball from. I don't know what you're talking about Jim Schwartz. We don't have shovels here at the stadium. <laughs> there it is. Henry with a low sinking kick that will drop in the snow and Ross will pick it up. Ross with some room and Eagles cover him up. Colt McCoy excuse me Colt Anderson. But McCoy's on another team with the tackle. So the Lions take over up eight here in the Philly Snowball. There is still so much snow on the field, and you really get the perspective when the ball's covered, almost completely covered when it ends up on punts. And it's unreal. In the middle of the field, it's cleared. On the sides is where the snow is really collected. I think those shots down the field are there. I mean, I, I think it's worth taking for both teams. We've seen them work for both sides. Stafford in the shotgun on first down. Four man rush wide open. It's Johnson. Up, I believe, just shy of the first down. He's going to pick up nine for Calvin Johnson, his third catch. Well, Calvin ja Johnson, we said it from the beginning three targets, three catches. Clearly not affected by this weather and I would wear him out along with the downhill running because what you're going to get with the weather they know you're going to try to run the ball you're going to get the one on ones that you rarely get with Calvin Johnson. And there it is right there one on one on Kerry Williams. Second and one it's Bell. going to be close. Vinnie Curry who plays you know around 20 snaps a game always seems to be around the football. Curry grew up an Eagles fan and now he's making plays for him. What he is they play a two gap style defense he's a penetrator and that's exactly what he does right there penetrate and makes the tackle for the loss. Third and inches. Eagles come with the pressure. Stafford over the middle, and he's got a first down. It's Burleson. It's one of those crazy arm angles you'll see from Matthew Stafford. So, so much like Brett Favre throwing, backing up from different arm angles, and he does have a cannon, and what a quick trigger Matthew Stafford has. He uses it on that third down conversion. Stafford told us about using those arm angles. He said it's a field thing. Sometimes six inches can make a big difference in a throw. Too many guys can back up and sling it sidearm like that in a snowstorm. Bell on first down. Can't get the edge because Ball went right over to make the tackle after a short game. We have a game break checking in with the very warm Kurt Menefee. Well, uh, not a pretty sight going on in New England where Rob Gronkowski was carted off. He was hit in the lower leg, not quite sure whether it's a knee injury or lower leg injury. We will update you on the post-game show when you guys are done. Cleveland leads that game 12-0 on the scoreboard. Kevin uh, and John. I mean, so Gronkowski hurt. We saw Adrian Peterson go out on a card, and in that game, the Browns up 12 to nothing. Was that for a stunner? Lions a yard shy of midfield. All kinds of time for Stafford. Looks to run it. And he gets tackled at the line of scrimmage. Benny Logan was there. So was Michael Kendricks. You know, we're talking about how this is affecting the offense so much. One thing we've seen all day, when these quarterbacks go back to throw, they got all day. Mm. Because the defensive linemen, the pass rushers, can't get any footing. They're trying. But you're pushing against big men in the snow. Hard to get the footing necessary to get to the quarterback. See guys just kicking snow out of the way to get a little footing. That's Baldwin trying to kick snow out to get a little plank for this pass rush. Third down and eight. Stop 
Bradford tipped at the line of scrimmage and a big play by Fletcher Cox. So what do you do if you can't get there? Get your hands up. And that's exactly what Fletcher Cox does. He runs a little TE game with Connor Barwin. Gonna get that hand up and deflect the football. Another opportunity for the Eagles offense awaiting. And an opportunity for Deshaun Jackson to return a punch. That's a boomer. That's going to be into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Eagles will start on their own 20 with 24 seconds to go in the third quarter. Chip Kelly talks to Nick Foles. Eagles and their playmakers on the field down eight. Fox UFC Saturday returns this week as Demetrius Johnson defends his World Flyweight Championship against Joseph Benavidez. It's live on Fox coverage Saturday at 8 Eastern only on Fox. Weather's been a big factor today. Big game in the playoff race. Each team at 7 and 5. Eagles scored on their last drive on the touchdown to Deshaun Jackson. As you see the offensive leaders for this game, but the weather's played huge and you just feel, John, as long as it's within a one-score game, anybody can break a big play at any time where there could be a fumble. It's just one of those games. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think it's the big plays that are going to determine this game, and you're seeing both offenses, in particular the Eagles offense, starting to wake up and figure out how to play. And I think you're right. You said earlier the, feet, the balls downfield are there. You're getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverages because teams are loading up to stop the run, and you got one-on-ones with big explosive receivers outside. Oh. We know the Lions have a bunch of big, tall receivers. You see the temperature. It's 27 in Philadelphia. And you know, the Eagles' big receiver is Riley Cooper, and they went to him for a 44-yard gain on the last drive. Snow continuing to fall at a slower rate. There's been some day. It's really wild every snap watching the big boys get up there clear the clear the, the snow for their footing every snap you're seeing it Cooper in motion on first down he falls with the pump fake throws on the run Cooper has it and a big play for the Eagles which should take us to the end of the third quarter somehow falls slung it in there it's a 25 yard game well, this connection, it wasn't working early. It's starting to work. Nick Foles to Riley Cooper. It's been awesome all year long, and it's starting to be in the snow in Philly. 14-6 Lions after three in the snow from Philly. Set for a good finish in Philadelphia in a field that's had up to six inches of snow. How in the world did this get to Riley Cooper, John? Well, watch Stephen Tulloch. He's going to get a little tug to pull himself and right through his hands in the snow. It's not just the receivers struggling catching the ball. It's the guys on defense as well. That was the last one. 44 yards on the last drive, which set up the Eagles' touchdown. So Cooper has come to life. Three catches, 74 yards, and a first down for the Eagles as we start the fourth quarter. And Foles throws it into the dirt. Let's check in on the field with Molly. Thanks, Kevin. Right before halftime, I had one of the line judges go out to the field and check to see how high the snow was at its highest point. It was almost six inches. He checked with this ruler. I just had one of the grounds crew check. Since then, the snow hasn't stopped. It's now at almost eight inches. Kevin. Oh, my goodness. Eight inches. That's like picking up the, the rock and going to the schoolyard and throwing it around today. Falls pumps. Going deep. All he has for Jackson, and he out threw him. That's hard to do to out throw to Sean Jackson. You see Deshaun Jackson working through those eight inches of snow. And Nick Foles airs it out. We've got a penalty. Well, there's a personal foul. We didn't see the flag. And I still don't see. Oh, there it is. Hockley picked it up. Personal foul on the Lions. Huge play for 15 yards. They're going to get Nick Fairley for roughing the passer. And I don't know if I see it right there. It looks like a clean, good clean hit to me, but Ed Hockley docks 
Nick Fairley in the Lions 15 yards. Now the Eagles in Detroit territory at the 40. Falls a lot of time again and again. He's going up top for Jackson. Knocked away at the last moment. Lewis Delmas is the guy. What a great play to save a touchdown. We're talking about those shots down the field because they appear to be there. You watch Lewis Delmas, not in the screen. Look at where he comes from. That's range. That's playing center field. And Lewis Delmas, always an impactful player when he's out there. He's had the chronic knee issues which have kept him from the field as much as they, they would like. Brad Smith in the game, I think for the first time for Philadelphia, but they give to McCoy. Big hole. Sean McCoy he's gonna hide in there now come out and hurdle Delmas the free safety and take it to the house for the Philadelphia Eagles and now they go for the two-point try to tie it You've got Bryce Brown as the back in the game because McCoy's probably gassed after that run but that's a big guy to have out for a two-pointer to tie it no doubt about it Ball is going to throw a fade. Ertz, not close. And a flag. Now let's see what this flag is on. Holding defense. And that allows the Eagles to get McCoy back in the game, I would think. Holding defense, number 90. After this is the goal, retry. Well, the Eagles will get to do it again for the tie. That's on Sue. And you see Indomit and Sue right here working on Kelsey. And I have no idea that you usually see that call in the run game so he can free linebackers or whatnot. They get Indomit and Sue. Maybe it's there on Palmer. I, I don't know. I didn't really see it. Bottom line, Eagles will try for the tie. They split Cooper to the top of the screen. Bryce Brown still in the game at back. Jackson in motion. They give to Bryce Brown, and this game is tied. And so the penalty on Sue, or whoever was on, is enormous. And I have no idea after watching that replay what the penalty was, but I do know this, the Philadelphia Eagles just took advantage of it and tied this football game up. And the Eagles, who seem down and out, have stormed back to tie it in the fourth. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by KFC, the official sponsor of Couch Gating. KFC plus football equals Couch Gating. We're all tied in Philadelphia. They'll kick it off to Ross, who takes it at the one. He's got a punt return touchdown today. Patiently through the hole is Ross. One man to beat. Ross still on his feet. He's going to take it all the way. 98 yards. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just a total breakdown by the Philadelphia special teams. You scratch and claw and find your way back in the football game tied, and you allow that to happen can't happen. And what a job by Jeremy Ross, who's already taken a punt return back for the Detroit Lions, going 99 yards on the kickoff return. He was with Green Bay. They signed him from the practice squad October 19th. 
and he's given the Lions two touchdowns today. Incredible. And now the Lions will go for two. No one has attempted an extra point or field goal today. That's how bad the field is. Lions may have moved as a flag. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty. Retry. And so they'll move it back and try it one more time. And Kevin, one thing that's consistent in snow or no snow, they're going to pay special attention to Calvin Johnson. If you saw that last look, Trent Cole was aligned out on Calvin Jackson, Johnson, and now they're going to go for the extra point. So the first time today anybody's tried a, a kick of any kind and David Akers who had so many great years in Philadelphia will try an extra point. But this is no gimme even if they clear the snow this is no gimme at all. Remember, Molly said eight inches of snow in some parts. Schwartz called the timeout to get them to clear the area for David Eckers. It's a huge, it's a huge call, I think, John. I mean, <laughs> this is what he called the timeout for. You know, if they don't get this, <laughs> you could potentially lose on an extra point. So he wanted time to make it, I guess, as good as possible for Akers to get decent footing. And it's working. <laughs> the big boys came in and cleared the cleared the snow and I think that's a great timeout by Jim Schwartz every point is valuable <laughs> Pettigrew doing little last minute work meanwhile a lot of pressure on Don Muleback the long snapper and the rookie punter Sam Martin who's holding right now number six this is the extra point It's blocked. It's dead ball. It's not a field goal. Extra point. Extra point. This will not count. The crowd's going nuts. And Bradley Fletcher thinks he's going to have a score, but it's an extra point. Benny Logan got a hand on it. That was a heck of an effort for nothing. <laughs> he's having a heck of a celebration. Dead ball. A blocked try. In the NFL cannot be returned. It's dead the moment the kick fails. Try Kemp failed. You see, that's what's so hard, the mechanics. The snap is low, the kick is low. And I believe it's Benny Logan who, yeah, Benny Logan, the nose guard, right up the middle, gets his hand up. How about the return by Ross? I mean, that's the play that that got it here. Well, it's excellent blocking. I mean, that's just hats on hats. And then you got Jeremy Ross against Alex Henry, the kicker, advantage Detroit Lions. And what a football game he's having in this snow. Just watching the last couple of drives, it feels like maybe, maybe John, the footing's getting a little bit better. I mean, I don't know if the footing's getting better. I think what's happening, you you get used to things and is you figure out how to. All right, I got to keep my feet underneath me, and the middle of the field's becoming better because that's where all the big boys are playing, and the majority of the games played in there. Now the sides, you still have those eight inches of snow. Look at that. They almost have more return yards than total yards. The bottom line is after the Eagles score two touchdowns in under three and a half minutes to tie it the Lions right back in front by six 14 20 to go in the game and it's Brandon Boykin back deep to return it. It's a returnable kick Boykin at the six. And he slammed backwards boy we've had. A little bit of everything today with the snowstorm in Philadelphia. A couple special teams touchdowns. The Eagles with a couple scores to get back in it. Big plays despite the weather. And maybe a gift too. There's Indomitian Sue. This was the two point try. They call holding on Indomitian Sue. I, I have no idea what they're calling. 
I have no idea. Absolutely no idea what they're calling. He does have Kelsey by the jersey, but long story short, that allowed the two-point conversion. And then Ross takes back the kickoff. It's McCoy, who's had himself a big second half. McCoy's over 100 yards now, especially after that 40-yard touchdown run. The Philadelphia offense gaining traction, literally and figuratively, starting to figure out how to work and how to operate in the snow and a rhythm to this offense. Fall is going to throw it. Brad Smith. Good stiff arm from Brad Smith to get the first down. And fans want a flag, but there is no flag. And Deshaun Jackson's got to be careful. He's right in the official's face there. Chip Kelly right there as well. See Brad Smith get the ball to him. Does a nice job using that big body, really running through Chris Houston. Surprised they didn't get an extra 15 right there. Yeah, that extra shot at the end certainly warranted it. Eagles at their own 43 on a first down. It's McCoy sprinting through the line. McCoy! LaShawn McCoy! And we're all tied! Last four minutes have been bedlam in Philadelphia in the snow. 57-yard run. And I want you to watch up front, but then we're going to see a block from Jason Avant. He's going to flash into your screen right about there. Look at that block by Jason Avant. Clears the way for LaShawn McCoy, who certainly has gained traction. Look at Jason Avant on Bill Bentley. Took two with him. Lewis Delmas tries one last gasp, but LaShawn McCoy is gone. Back and forth action here now. And now the Eagles, because of the trouble the Lions showed, won't try to kick the extra point to take the lead. They'll go for two. Bryce Brown in the game at tailback. That's Casey in motion. Blitz coming, falls. What a catch! Two-point conversion. It's Cooper. It's Philadelphia in front. Riley Cooper's a Florida boy. He was freezing earlier, but he's thawed out and starting to make plays for the Philadelphia Eagles along with LaShawn McCoy. Three touchdowns in this wild fourth quarter. Eagles in front. How crazy is this game with all the snow? Consider that there were 20 points total before the last minute 21 where there have been 22 points scored <laughs> what in the world is going on in Philadelphia in a big game as both these teams chase a playoff spot Eagles in front a little pooch kick by Henry and it's taken by the up man for the Lions who gets out seal Riddick making the play and that was wise they're tired of kicking to Jeremy Ross and you see the last player with a punt return and kick returner Eddie Payton Walter's brother December 17th 1977 thus the pooch kick Artie Kepner tells us our director he's a golf coach now Artie, I don't know how you knew that but that's impressive <laughs> no golf in this weather fans are into it in Philadelphia their team up by two plenty of time left in this game Pressure coming and Stafford had to get it away. Kendricks came flying in. One thing Kendricks has is speed. They're going to run a little blitz right up in Stafford's face and the speed of Kendricks. Watch Kendricks going to come through there. D'Amico Ryan's going to loop around. And Kendricks with the burst to Matthew Stafford. He has to throw it away. Checks in for a big formation. Fake to Bell. Pressure again. Stafford has time now. Throws it a wobbler. And Calvin Johnson almost came back to it. Couldn't make it. Third and ten. Those are the one-on-ones we're talking about. They stack Calvin Johnson to take the jam off him. And anytime you can get Calvin Johnson one-on-one -on -one downfield, 
then it's to your benefit. But Matthew Stafford can't get the ball downfield in this weather. Just give him an opportunity, he'll make a play. But the weather prohibits Stafford from doing it. Foles, who had such a tough time throwing the ball earlier, has been the guy that's come on. And now a third and ten. Stafford on the run. He's got Bell for a Lion first down. There's a couple of flags, though. He's going to get offense alignment downfield. That was a designed screen. It took so long that Riola's 10 yards downfield, and the officials are all over it. Ed Hockley and his crew making sure to get this one right. And Curry says it's on them. It holds a receiver downfield by the offense. Number 51. Five yard penalty. Watch Raiola right, right there, the center. This is a design screen. The linemen are going to release. Now Raiola, look at them right there. That's him five yards downfield. By the time Stafford throws it, he's closer to 10. Good call by the officials. Time on the play clock at third and 15. It's a three man rush and still pressure, and Stafford overthrows Bell. And the Lions will have to punt it away. So interesting the ebbs and flows of this game, Kevin, adjusting to the weather. At one point, it looked like Detroit, who had the upper hand. I got to give credit to the Philadelphia Eagles because this style does not this weather does not lend to their style but they've adjusted magnificently Jackson's gonna let it go in this thick snow nope now he'll pick it up and drag down is Jackson at about the 28 yard line after a 44 yard punt and Ross the guy who's been everywhere on special teams the guy that made the hit I think a little candidate early candidate for special teams player of the week Jeremy Ross, fabulous tackle. Got him by his sleeve. Hey, John Fox, tomorrow the future and past collide on an epic night of drama. First, the critically acclaimed new hit series, Almost Human. Then an all-new Sleepy Hollow, a father risks everything for answers. It all starts tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on Fox. So the Eagles up by two, 12-20 to go in the game. Each team at 7-5, certainly chasing the playoffs here today. Foles is really heated up. So is McCoy. And McCoy with another beautiful move. But Sean McCoy can't be stopped. And they say that the ball was indeed down. 26 on the run. Well, early on, I'm talking about it doesn't lend to his style. Well, now that's the LaShawn McCoy we're accustomed to. The cutting, the slashing. LaShawn McCoy has figured out. Down by contact. <laughs> and Glover Quinn just gets left in the snow, and he's an excellent open field tackler, LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy at 196 yards on the ground now. Foles on a broken play, has a lot of room to run, and he's got a first down and more. And finally slides down inside the 25. It's like the Eagles offense, John, forgot there was snow on the ground all of a sudden. <laughs> well, this is so much respect for the run. That's the true read. And then Foles, not fleet of foot. I'd call him a mutter, but he gets positive yards when he needs to. It's Bryce Brown on the carry and the stiff arm. First and goal, Philadelphia. So LaShawn McCoy with a career high in rushing, and now Bryce Brown, the backup, gets into it. Again, adjustments. Last time, Foles keeps it and runs. So what do you do? You give it to Brown and allow him to go downhill. 
Chip Kelly in this Philadelphia offense making the adjustments necessary, and they've been fantastic as this game's continued to develop. McCoy back in the game. And it is McCoy up the gut inside the five. McCoy's got four. Stephen Tullock on the stop. So McCoy now over 200 yards, a new career high. You know, and you remember, Kevin, we opened the game saying this is a defense the last six games been holding people to 40 yards rushing, 1.9 per rush. And Philadelphia getting after him. Detroit jumps. It's going to be an offsides on the Lions. They reached out and touched Evan Mathis. Some discussion. Maybe they feel that Mathis is the one who glitched first. This happened earlier. They Detroit jumped and they reached across. They actually called it on the Eagles. Mm. Do you ever think the way this game started, you'd see LaShawn McCoy with 201 yards rushing with all the snow on the ground? No. A lot of discussion here. Neutral zone infraction defense. Half the distance to the goal. On this play, the defender got into the neutral zone. And then he was touched. And the prior play, the defender never got in the neutral zone. Great explanation for Ed Hockley. Look at that. Last six games, 40 yards rushing. The Lions have allowed 246 today. Unbelievable. McCoy this quarter, this quarter, for the 132 yards rushing. Second and goal from the two. McCoy stopped a little shy. It'll be a third and goal. Willie Young on the tackle. Remember, this is, you know, this was strength on strength. You're talking about Philadelphia offense, not just the second leading rusher in the NFL. This is second ranked rush offense. We hear so much about Nick Foles in the season. Can't see the goal line. <laughs> I've never heard that in a football game. <laughs> we can't see the goal line. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> well, he's being honest. <laughs> and, and consider this, you know, not only for the crew on the field, but for the replay official. Remember before we had to play with Deshaun Jackson, they couldn't tell where the young line was. And so get out the snow blowers. <laughs> this has been fun today, boy. And so much on the line with these teams in the playoff hunt. And just a wild fourth quarter. And consider coming in, the Eagles won four in a row. But all everybody talked about in Philadelphia was when they can't close out a game. They were outscored 33 to nothing in the fourth, their last four wins. Not today. You see, the last 200 yard game was from Deuce Stale. He was now a coach on this Eagles staff. Maybe they figured it out. They got to play from behind. Those <laughs> other games, they were ahead. It's a third and goal. McCoy is stacked up. And so now a fourth and goal in the shadows of the goal line. Eagle's going to hurry it up and try and sneak it on in. Folds will sneak it literally. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown. It's where it helps to have a 6 6 quarterback. Nick Foles going to get behind Mathis and Peters. Great job going right into the strength of the Detroit defense and they win that battle of the line of scrimmage right there what a job an offense we're so used to seeing going side to side go straight downhill 
into the strength of the Lions defense. And now going for the two point conversion. Eagles up eight to make it a two score game. Falls incomplete. Looking for Jackson. And so it stays a one score game. Eagles offensive line has had a nice fourth quarter. Riley Cooper's happy, and so are the Eagles. Up eight on the Lions in this fourth quarter. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, this has been wild here in Philadelphia today with the snow, and the fourth quarter closing out games have been a big topic in Philadelphia. Well, here they've played from behind, and they've been unbelievable on offense. This guy's been great, too. Ross with two touchdowns, and he's looking for another one. He gets the edge, and a big return again by Ross. I can't believe they kicked it to him. That's a mistake kicking to him. The guy's been so explosive today. We saw the last kick. They chipped one and got great field position. Don't kick it to the guy. And if so, get your tail outside. Contain the football. Jeremy Ross having an unbelievable day as a returner in the snow for the Detroit Lions. It have been better kicking it out of bounds. It was started at the 40, not the 48. And so the Eagles up eight. With 8.09 to play. Look at his numbers. That's from him, Ross, one man. Out doing the whole offense. Pressure on Stafford. He's got a man, Bell, in the flat. Leaps over defender, Joyke Bell. Inside the 25, he hopped over Nate Allen and Joy Bell out of the backfield with a big play and a gain of 28. Well, they call Joy Bell a jack of all trades. He can beat you with the run, with the pass, and also with the hurdle. The player from Wayne State, about five minutes away from the Lions facility. The hometown scouting paid off. And what a play by Joy Bell. <laughs> Joy Bell was actually a security guard at Ford Field while he was in college. Now he's starring for the Lions. And it puts the Lions first and ten and a fumble. Stafford back to get it. He drops it again. Eagles have it. Michael Kendricks gets up and going. He is whistled down, though. He is whistled down. Philadelphia football. And Stafford had to fall on that ball, not try to pick it up. The runner was down by contact. Philadelphia ball, first down. Stafford signaling the motion. You see, he's never expecting the football from Riola. And it's really strange to me. I understand the weather, but these guys have played football together for five years, that they're having the problem with the center quarterback exchange. And at this point, Stafford's got to just fall on the football. Instead, it's Michael Kendricks. <laughs> this game is crazy. Back and forth. Unreal. This is what infuriates people about the Lions. You know, I mean, yeah, the weather's been a factor today, but you know, now, even though the field's a mess, the Eagles offense is taken off, and the Lions with the golden opportunity after a big play. Look at that. Now, again, early, a lot of the weather a factor, but a big play with the Eagles up eight, their football 7.21 to go, and they have it on their own 40-yard line. And Sean McCoy is at 202 yards rushing. That's a career high. We'll get it again. And McCoy forward for four. Kevin, you, you, I mean, you just hit it. It's, this is the Detroit Lions and why they're so infuriating because they're so talented. You mm -hmm. see it. There's so many great players, superstar players. But I don't care whether or not, at the end of the day, three turnovers for the Lions, one for the Eagles. And early on, it looked like, all right, they may be able to overcome in these weird situations, these weird elements, but not so. It always comes back to bite you. The Lions better fix it or they won't find themselves in the playoffs. Now Foles working the clock, taking some time off. On three, and there's a flag. Neutral zone infraction, defense, number 92. Five yard penalty, it's second down. Look at the missed snaps under center in the shotgun. It didn't matter. The Detroit Lions have struggled with the simplest of plays in the snow. 
They'll take some time off the clock again. On a second and one. McCoy tries to get outside. It's not there. No gain on that play. How good has LaShawn McCoy's day been, John? Well, there you see the Eagles today. He's got 206 yards rushing, and our super stat man, Jeff Nelson, tells us it's a new Eagles record. Steve Van Buren, 205 yards. That was in 1949. Great job, Nelly. Third and short. That's a long time ago. Yes, it was. Again, working time in the game on that play clock for its McCoy. And it's going to be awfully close. It's right on that line. And I think he's got it. He does. First down, Philadelphia. You got to give Jason Kelsey a big, big attaboy today because he's taking on Indomitian Sue, one of the great tackles in football today. Now he gets a double there. But they're running it right into the teeth of this defense. And Jason Kelsey has played his tail off against one of the better defensive players in football in Indomitian Sioux. Third year man from Cincinnati. You know, he had a torn ACL and MCL last year. And the Eagles offensive line was brutal partly because of it. And he has been the anchor today of the first down, 444 to play. McCoy, what a move. Coming near side, diving near the first down. Willie Young, meet LaShawn McCoy. My goodness, watch this move in space. Boom. You think you have him, and you don't. And LaShawn McCoy has been magnificent. And shame on me for questioning if he could run in these elements because he's been unbelievable. The Eagles were just trying to quiet the crowd because they were starting to chant Shady, which is McCoy's nickname. <laughs> Got 216 yards and two touchdowns today on 30 carries. What a day. Second and an inch. Chris Polk in the game. First down. Tullock meets him, but not before the first. Now time becoming a factor. Lions with two timeouts left. But the Eagles on the drive. America's Game of the Week coming up next on Fox. Most of you will see the Seahawks and the 49ers from San Francisco, Giants and Chargers as well. And here in this big game, Eagles trying to take the edge over Dallas in the division. John Cowboys played tomorrow night, and the Lions trying to let the Bears back in it in the NFC North. Play clock at two. Get it off. It's Chris Polk through the line. Chris Polk is going to score. Touchdown, Philadelphia. 38 yards. This offensive line is blowing the doors off of this game in this fourth quarter. Credit, credit to this offensive line. We didn't think they could play this style of football. Just watch and enjoy. Them dominate the line of scrimmage. Mathis and Kelsey. Jason Peters, Lane Johnson, Todd Harriman's. What a job. And LaShawn McCoy and Curtis Polk have done the rest. What a great job by this offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles going for two. I'm surprised they wouldn't try an extra point here. Already up 14, but it's just been so hard. To even try with the weather, they'll go Polk to try to get it in. He won't do it. But the Eagles' lead is 14. And the Eagles' run game has been unbelievable. They are boogieing in South Philly. We welcome those who just joined us watching the Packers come back win over the Falcons. And Packers fans liking this result 20 unanswered points for the Eagles to take a 14 point lead over the Lions here in snowy Philadelphia and they kick it again it's been a coverage problem all day long to the up man in a snowstorm today Doran Dickerson is the guy that brings it out for the Lions a snowstorm that was 
unbelievable the start of the game. You see the summer, the Eagles going crazy in this fourth quarter, despite the efforts of Jeremy Ross for Detroit, who had kick return touchdown, punt return touchdown. This has been a wild game. And you know, the way it started with the snow job, this fourth quarter, the Eagles' offensive line has been the difference, really. Yeah, you're right. And, and I think you really got to hand it to Chip Kelly. I think his best coaching job to date, because they had to adjust. This doesn't set up for their style of football, but they made it their style. And exactly right. They had to give a game ball to every offensive lineman because they've been handling this dominant group of defensive linemen for the Detroit Lions. Now it's on the Eagles' D. As Stafford tries to engineer a comeback, but can't hit Brandon Pettigrew. Obviously, time a factor, 2.47 to go. Lions with two timeouts. It's Nick Foles who they give him a lot of credit. He didn't look like he could throw the ball in the snow at all. And then midway through the third quarter, he started chucking it. He did. And Riley Cooper woke up as well and started making plays down the field. And boy, LaShawn McCoy has been fantastic. 219 yards for LaShawn McCoy today. Second and ten, Stafford dropped by Burleson. We got a game break, checking in with Joel Clapp. Kevin, we go to Baltimore. Remember Baltimore in that sixth and final playoff spot in the AFC, and Joe Flacco with a huge drive in the fourth quarter to Dennis Pitta, his first game back. Baltimore takes the 15-12 lead. Just over two minutes to go. Kevin, John, and Molly. Joel, thanks. Meanwhile, Miami is hot on their tails. They're trailing Pittsburgh by four, three minutes to go, and they've got the ball there. Third and ten. Stafford dumps it off to Bell, who can't find it. And Kevin, it's it's just really really strange watching this game. The Detroit Lions seem completely in control. And they better hope that this is not symbolic of their entire season because they're in control of that division. But can they hang on? Can they press the gas pedal and finish with a flurry, as Matt Staff Stafford said, or are they going to fall apart? They did today. This is really the game here. Fourth and ten for the Lions. Plenty of time. Stafford on courts. One tip. Incomplete. Eagles will get it back. It was D'Amico Ryans who knocked it up in the air. Uh, I think appropriate that he's the guy who makes the play because he's been their best player on defense throughout the season. D'Amico Ryans had just a marvelous season. Reading the eyes of Matt Stafford. Stafford looking to Calvin Johnson. But D'Amico Ryans undercuts Johnson to break it up on fourth down. And so Philadelphia takes over with 2.33 to go in the game. Lions have two timeouts and the two-minute warning. Eagles up 14 points. Bryce Brown in the game now. And he gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Lions call their second timeout. We'll be back to Philly in a moment. John, that number is ridiculous. 227 rush yards in the fourth quarter. You talk about imposing your will. You know, and fourth quarter was an area where Chip Kelly and the Eagles have struggled. They said they were going to work on it. Whatever they did worked. Bryce Brown gets it. And he's going to get no gain. Lions will call their final timeout while they do that. We've got Joel Klatt standing by with a game break. Kevin back to Baltimore. Minnesota right back down the field. Toby Gerhardt from 41 yards out back through the middle of the defense and in for the touchdown. And Minnesota has taken the lead 19-15 with 127 left. Kevin John, a good one there, Baltimore. Wowzers, man. That's crazy, too. <laughs> so the Vikings not going away. John, I think you hit it. I think when you look at the Eagles, what they've done today, as we look at the NFC North, Detroit, destiny in their hands. They beat the Bears twice this year. Chicago plays Dallas Monday night, and the Packers with a huge comeback win to stay in it, really, 
and remember should get Aaron Rodgers back <laughs> next week so that changes everything he sure does here are the Eagles on third down can take it to the two minute warning the Lions out of timeouts down 14 with the Brown who is going backwards and that will take it to the two minute warning in Philly the Eagles have come to life in this fourth quarter and are on track to get their eighth win of the year and at least until tomorrow night when the Cowboys play take the lead in the NFC East while the Lions it's been the other way around dominated early but they're trailing two minutes to play. Fourth down for the Eagles try to salt this one away. Don't forget the Seahawks and the Niners coming up next on Fox America's Game of the Week. San Francisco has won four straight at home against Seattle. The Eagles by two touchdowns, two minutes to go. Lions out of timeout. Trying to run the game out. And they've got a big play to sell it. And he's going to slide down safely, and the Eagles will run it out, run out the clock. <laughs> What a fantastic and gutsy call. You've got everybody loaded in the box. You've been imposing your will. Watch Selleck. Going to sell the run hard. Block out, block out. Now release. And Nick Foles with the touch pass. And this, every kid in America that lives in the snow has done this one in the backyard. Selleck gives up the touchdown and has a little fun doing it to ice the clock even more. Selfless, too, by the way. I mean, he's yeah. smart. He didn't score a personal touchdown. You know, the Eagles came in leading the league in big plays, John, over 20 yards. He's got 12 of them today. 12. And now the clock will just run on down. They can kneel it out and just run it down. And I think this is the most impressive one of the year for the Eagles. Absolutely. They, they, they had to adjust who they are, the way they play, and they made it happen. The fourth quarter, they've struggled. They fixed that. Incredible win for the Philadelphia Eagles. Not to take one more knee if they so choose. Big picture camera provided by Nationwide Insurance. The time lapse of today in the crazy weather. That was, you know, an hour and a half for the game, and then game time. Boom! Look at that picture. Snow everywhere. Molly told us up to eight inches center of the field. That was at the break. They cleared it off. And now, as this game will run out, and the Philadelphia Eagles will improve to eight and five and knock off the Detroit Lions 34 to 20 in Philadelphia today. Big win for Chip Kelly and company. For Molly McGrath, John Lynch and our entire crew, I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Eagles win it here. Back to the studio. Kurt Menefee and the fellas take it away.